Hello darlings, welcome to Tammy in Tiaras. I wear tiaras to shine a prettier light onto mental health issues. I also love to knit and crochet and do all those lovely handworking things that us ladies love to do. Live a slow life. Enjoy my garden. Enjoy my piano. And just generally do the things that I want to do now at this stage in my life. I will apologise if this is a bit noisy. It's a bit windy today, so there's a little bit of that sort of noise. Sorry about that. Can't help it. It is what it is. So this week I decided to tackle my sewing box. So if you want to see me upend my sewing box and make the biggest mess on the kitchen table that you've ever seen, the dining room table, then join me because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to organise it. My sewing box is actually from the 1970s or late 1960s. My mum got it as a Christmas present. Maybe she got it in 1970 because it's that fabric. And when she passed away, of course, it was one of the things that I absolutely treasure. But it's not been renovated apart from Bert's put some new hinges on it and I don't want to renovate it I just want to leave it the way that mum had it but it does need a bit of TLC so Bert had to use the TLC and fix up a few things on it so I'll show you some of that I'll show you all the bits and bobs in my sewing box I cannot believe what I've got in my sewing box I've had a few projects that have needed doing. I've needed to put some elastic in some pajama bottoms. I've got my favourite ever dress that had two tiny holes in it. And it's that sort of fabric that's stretchy, so it's a bit of a challenge to, you know, just to, you know, darn on it or something. So what I've done is I've put a patch over it and it's super pretty because anybody who knows me knows I love sparkling. The better the sparkle, the more I love it. So I've popped that on there and hopefully that will work so I can still wear it. I love this dress so much that I brought another one. Quite often with the dresses you see me in, because I don't like making decisions, I cannot, I'm very hard at that. If I see it again online, I'll buy it so that I have another one so that I've got two of the same dress because I just love them, I don't like change. Lucy's been good, been with me the whole time, of course, looking after us, doing all the Lucy things. So join me this week as I tackle my sewing box. Also, I'm making a meatloaf for tea. I'll enclose the recipe. It's a wonderful recipe. It's a Thermomix recipe if you've got a Thermomix, so super simple to do. But I don't mix it in the Thermomix. I still use my bowl, but I follow the recipe. And it's actually from the 1930s, this recipe, because I remember my grandmother soaking the milk to go in meatloaf, soaking breadcrumbs to go in the meatloaf. So there you go. It's an old one that mum used to do as well. So that's what's been happening this week. Bert and I went shopping and we bought some new winter Ugg boots. And they're lovely, but of course I had to make them mine. So I put a bit of, Bert put a bit of, decoration on them. I thought I'd do some embroidery, but I couldn't get it through the sheepskin. It's really, really tough stuff. And because they are the proper Ugg boots, I couldn't get the needle through. So in the end, Bert hot glued some pretty stuff I had in the box, in the sewing box, and I used that. So that's wonderful. I don't know if I showed you the shelf that Bert had done for me with this beautiful fringing. So I'll show you that as well. You'll see that. That's this week. So join me. And if you like, consider subscribing. Sit and have a coffee with me. Have a cup of tea and relax. Let's just enjoy some quiet time. So I've decided to empty out my sewing box and give it a good old clean through. It's just too much for me. It's too much messy. Going to buy some little containers and put it in. I've got one container here that Benjamin actually made. So 
So I've given it to Bert and he's had to do some repairing of this because this is from the 1960s and this was my mum's. And I absolutely love anything that's vintage and old. And although a lot would probably just replace, I've asked if he can repair it because he's done it before and he'll probably do it again. So that's what he's doing. As you can tell, he's already replaced the hinges on it. It was quite broken when I got it. And he's just fixed this here. This had come off. Um, but like, I love the fact that the original catch is still on it, even if it doesn't do up anymore. And mum had made it her own by putting a frill around it in the 90s. And I love it. And on the top, it's still got the 1960 or early 70s, really 60s velour on the top of it. And it's just so handy. You can just pick it up and it can just live somewhere, which it does. And I love it. And of course, on here, I've got essential things like how long Benjamin's trouser length need to be and the dates when I've done it last. 2017. Been a while, Ben. Yeah, so I've been working on all these things and thinking what, like having some mending I've had to do because it started with my dress needed a patch and I showed you some photos where I've patched it. And then I thought, I need to clean this out. I don't know what I've got. I don't know what I haven't got. So I'm going to have fun bagging it all up. And then I'm going to keep my eye out at the... Salvation Army places and the Vinnies to see if I can get some really cute little boxes that I can use. I don't want to buy anything new. I like everything old. So that's the plan. This is like a lifetime of treasures, isn't it? I've done so well. You know, essential things that you have left over. Did I ever show you what Bert did with this for me? I don't think I did. I absolutely love this dress. It's super comfortable. I wear it all the time. I have actually two of them, but it's got a little hole in it. And I've seen another one, there's two. There's two holes in it. There's the other one, just there. So they're more difficult to think that, to fix than you think because it's sort of stretchy. So I'm going to do this. I have this wonderful butterfly applique that's actually adhesive as well. And I'm going to, I'm going to iron it on and then I'm going to hand sew around it. It is a shame that it's not further down the dress, but it is what it is. I've had this dress for five years. I love it so much, like I say, I bought another one. And uh, it's just beautiful. I love everything about it. I can't part with it. It will be forever patched. Charge of moving the train and blowing the whistle. And also by a fireman who manages the fuel and water levels, maintains the fire and operates the bell. At Disneyland, they refer to the fireman as a firer, since the person working the shift can be any gender. The four driving wheels provide all the pulling power in the form of tractive effort. The pilot wheels in the front of the locomotive only help support the front of the boiler and help ease it around turns. The tender, which is the small car that is often seen behind a locomotive, carries the water and fuel and supplies it using rubber hoses. The tender provides no pulling power. Restoration proved to be a difficult endeavor because nearly everything except for the wheels, rods, and cylinders needed to be replaced. Finally. After a year-long restoration, engine number four, the Ernest S. Marsh, debuted at Disneyland on July 25th, 1959. Engine number four may be the smallest engine on the Disneyland Railroad, but it is actually the most powerful in terms of tractive effort, because all of the locomotive's weight is sitting on its four driving wheels. The railroad wood engines required the railroad to be realigned 100 feet further to the west, a new station platform was built to service Frontierland and New Orleans Square. The original depot structure was retired, 
and moved to a display area and two new trains which would allow oh. Disneyland to run four at once in a busy center. Since most trains are a holiday special, Bob designed his new train similar to the freight train. He made the two new trains more efficient by giving them five long cars instead of eight short cars. <coughs> Disneyland is the only place in the world where you can see life-size dinosaurs diorama and maintains that designation. <coughs> So darlings, I do hope you will. Please leave me a comment, let me know what's been going on in the week. Once again, a special thank you to all the people that regularly comment on my videos. I so much appreciate your support. Thanks again to Mousy Makes. I'm still going through your videos because I absolutely love everything that you do. You're inspiring to me and I'm starting to branch out of doing just one project at a time, which is a big thing for me. So sending all my love for beautiful Ballarat. God bless, darlings. Take care. Bye for now. Lucky Lucy. Yeah, lucky Lucy. Oh, you're a kissy girl, aren't you? Millie never used to kiss. No. <laughs> Sweetie. Good girl, Mary. You happy? Yeah, you've been laying outside. Lovely. Go to the doggy park tonight? Yes, we can't go now. We can't go now. Too much to do now. We'll go tonight. Okay, Mary. Okay, Mary. Love you, Mary. Mary, darling. 
Your mummy's number one protector, aren't you, sweet pea? There is a huge spider up there. Right up there. Darling, what are we going to do? You're going to have a think about it for a little bit. What do you think? Should we get the mortine? Should we get the paper? Should we get the butter container? What do we do? Well, I'll leave it up to you to decide, okay? All right then. You just keep on resting. I don't want you tired for the day. Doggy park tonight. Yes. All right, you just rest up. Meanwhile, in Mummy's world... Nee, 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 Love you, Millie.